get into it. I was, in, I was in my bag, like buzzer beater, faders, everything, finishing at the rim, everything. I was in my, that's probably one of my favorite moments because that's when I was, that's when I really like felt like I was dominating like, at the college level. I, that's the first time I felt like the stuff I was doing in high school, like I was dominating in high school, like I was doing that. I was doing that. Yeah, translating. So I'm yeah. like, yo, this is, this is probably like the best feeling in the world like I ever had. We got my boy Kai in the stool. Introduce yourself. Makai Reynolds, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, college currently undecided, but we're working on that. And yeah, just appreciate you for having me, bro. Sure. Learn as much as I can, figure out how like you got to who you are now. How did your environment and your basketball environment like mold you into the person and player you are? From when I was like five, six, I grew up I grew up in the gym. Because mm-hmm. my dad always used to go he always used to go to open runs like six, seven times a week. And I'll be in the gym, but I wasn't old enough to run with them. But it would be players like, like Pittsburgh legends, like Dewan Blair, made it to the NBA. Uh, DeAndre King, uh, like when I, I he went on like a crazy run with Iowa State, and I, I don't know what year it was exactly, but he went on a crazy run, uh, run with Iowa State in March Madness. And then uh, DJ Kennedy was the leading scorer at the TBT. So I'm like five six C and them hoop. Yeah. So like it was easy to like fall in love like with the game. I was seeing them hoop every day from the time I was like five or six till I was like twelve. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was it was easy it was easy to fall in love with the game of basketball. Like it was it was, it was easy, especially and I was watching my dad play. So <laughs> so how did like the the kind of way y'all play? Like for me, I just played a bunch of like grown ass people when I was younger. So like I was getting fouled, I was getting hacked. You know, you're not getting calls, like all types of shit. Like what kind of like play style were y'all? I was a bunch of dogs. Like like I'm. A lot of fouling, yeah. ar- like arguing after every call. So like I, that's why I feel like I could play in like any environment, just cause like what I what I grew up seeing and like what I grew up playing in. Yeah, it was a lot. Like yeah, a lot of a lot of fouls. Like I said, <laughs> a lot of a lot of shit talking, all that. So that shit don't really phase me now. So you and Cam probably the two I noticed most when I like moved here as far as like being in the gym the most. Just like yeah. obviously, like there's people that come back and forth from school and like don't live here, work out with cover or whatever. But like y'all were always in the gym, like training with cover or not. You feel me? So like, where did that come from? As far as like recognizing you had to have that type of work ethic, and when did it like start to click with you? Honestly, it came from just getting my ass busted. Like I got tired. I got tired of getting my ass busted, and yeah. I knew like the only way, the only way I could get better is if I, I get in the gym because I know. I know there was people that was like there was people that are still I'm not gonna lie there's people that's better than me of course but there there was people that was better than me when I was at a young age and they and I saw that they wasn't putting in that type of work so I knew that if I started putting in that type of work there would eventually be a point where I would start catching all those people that that was so called better than me yeah. yeah what sparked the passion like when you were growing up playing was there like a certain point or like a certain age where you're like nah this is what I want to do or was it just like you just always from a young age just like knew like nah it wasn't probably until like eighth, eighth or ninth grade, because uh, I was I was the only freshman that got we had a freshman team and a varsity team, and I was the only freshman that got moved to the varsity team. So that kind of like sparked my confidence a little bit. So I'm like, okay, I'm I'm decent at this game. Like yeah. maybe if I work at it, like I could make something out of it. Right. But like, all of that really comes from like results too. The work the work is not easy at all. Like it's tiring. Like it it does a lot to your body. Yeah. But like when you see results, like it feels like all that work that you put in behind closed doors is, is worth it. Mm-hmm. Coming from that work ethic, like always being in the gym, everybody always want to focus on shooting and everybody want to be Stephen Kyrie. But like when you grew up, where did the like the ball handling inspiration come from? And when did you really feel like you got the ball on the string? And, uh, ball is life mixtapes. Yeah. 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 Anybody like in particular? I know for me it was like a kill car, D Rose, John Wall. Mine was uh, mine was Marcus Levitt. Oh my God! Yeah, the sham guy. But yeah, yeah. balls like mixtapes. As soon as I saw that, bro, I went into the driveway. I forgot about I forgot about shooting the basketball once yeah. I saw what he was doing. Like as far as handling handling the rock, I'm, yeah. I for, I forgot about shooting for like a good year. I'm in the driveway all day recording myself doing all types of crossovers. Yeah, just trying to get all my shit right. Was there any specific NBA players that you watched when, like more so when you were younger? It's crazy because I was a Kobe guy, and Kobe don't really. Like pat, the rock, yeah, crazy. pat the rock like that. Yeah, I was. I think I was more of a Kobe guy because because of my dad. My dad was a Kobe guy. So like when you're younger, you kind of just follow what 
you feel me? Like, well, I, for me, I follow what my pops was doing. Yeah. But once I got old enough, like, and I started really watching the game and not just watching the Lakers games, like, that's when that's when I, I got on the step. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay. and like 20, 2013, 2014, that's when I got on the step. What do you think was like the turning point for you to go from like a decent like a hoop to time in your life or an off season where like some shit just changed with you or you changed shit as far as like your habits or being in the gym more or like any sacrifices you made? I knew I didn't really get that until probably after my first year of college. Because I knew I was good in high school, but I'm not, this area is not like, it's not a good measuring stick for like, really like talent. Because like, I'm, the whippy was starting, it's starting to get kind of easier. Yeah. And it's, it started with uh, my, my class in 2020, like the competition level dropped, like tremendously. Yeah. So like, I thought going into college, since I was dominating at this level, like it's going to be easy to dominate at this level. But when I got to college, it was people like, that was just like me. Once I got there, I didn't get, I wasn't getting the results that I wanted there. And after my first year, I came, I came home and it was that summer. I worked out, I worked out like a madman, like killing myself. Yeah. Just so I could get on the floor like the next year at college. And when I got back the next year, I saw I saw those results. I was starting. I went from not getting no time to starting the next year. So and once I got down, I'm like, okay, I can actually do something with this. Like, let me, let me really lock in. What did you give up time-wise the most? Because obviously when you're in the gym as much as you are now, like, you have to structure your whole day around that shit. Like, yeah. Especially when you're getting up early and you getting another workout later, like, you got to make sure you're, like, you eating at the right time, you're sleeping mm-hmm. at the right time. Like, 7 a.m. workout with Cub, you're not going out, doing nothing not the night before. Like, you better be awake <laughs> early. So, like, what was that uh, difference for you? Like, losing, not losing relationships with friends, but, like, just having friends that understood, like, like I can't be around them as much. Because like I have a goal, just like we, like me and my guys, we respect each other's goals. Yeah. So it was easy. It was easy for them to understand, uh, like me not seeing them as much because they understood what I was trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of harder to explain it to like, to like, like women, like to females. For sure. Because they don't understand that like to be like as good as you want to be at basketball, you have to put in that type of time. Yeah. So. You seem crazy though. Yeah, yeah, you seem crazy. So just explaining that to like women that I like I had involved in my life, like that, like I can't see them as much because I'm gonna be in the gym, which is like it was hard for them to understand, but I feel like they starting to get it more now. Yeah, once they see the results come yeah. slowly. How has basketball shaped your character? Basketball has helped me off the court more than anything. Just as far as like as much as you go through in basketball, like just. The resilience I have now, just even just throughout like day to day life, just from all the times that like I fell and learned in basketball, it's helped me. It's helped me like it's made like regular life like way easy. Cause I feel like that's the hardest thing to do is like just be a co- like a college athlete. That was actually my next question. How do you balance being a college athlete that's putting in all that time and dealing with like the mental roller coaster? Of balance that, or not even balance, cause I don't think balance is the right word. Cause you're not gonna really have balance, but like yeah. manage that. I try to I try to have a schedule. If I tell myself I'm gonna wake up at eight a.m. and get shots up, I try to make sure I do it then. I try to make sure I have like my whole workout plan, like what I'm gonna do after this class, and when I'm gonna get this work done. I try to have like slots in the day for like different things. Yeah. Which has made it easier, but also just like finding something like just finding stuff to take my mind off of all that, so I could have something to like get away from that yeah. so when I come back to it it makes it a little bit easier since you're currently in the transfer portal what is that like and what what are you looking for during that process uh it's scary I'm not gonna lie because like you don't know if if you're gonna find somewhere to go and like just having that thought of like you might not be able to hoop no more is it's definitely like you feel me it takes a, it takes a toll on your mental yeah but uh just what I've been trying to do is just stay in the gym and stay ready. So like if any opportunity does present itself, then I'll, I'll be ready. Before you got recruited, what did you realize I need to improve on this? Okay, I'm doing this well, but it needs to be taken to another level. When I was getting recruited, what I noticed that I need to work on the most, and I still do is like my strength. Mm-hmm. Like just as far as like being in the weight room consistently. And that's like, cause like I feel like the basketball stuff, like I feel like I do enough of that. 
But, like, as far as just, like, being in the weight room consistently and, like, just taking care of my body outside of basketball, like, as far as stretching, yeah, icing and all of that, I feel like that is, like, something I still need to work on because I feel like if I do that, then it'll take my game to the next level because, like, not – I understand I'm not going to be 100% every day. Like, my body's not going to feel 100%. But if I do the little stuff outside of it, then I'll be closer to 100 every day than, than I usually am. At what age do you think you started to be, like – you looked at yourself and you're like, okay, I could hoop. When I was 16. So, 16 was my first year playing in the pro am. You were playing in the pro am at 16? Yeah. Oh, no, you suck. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> no, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, what, what did you do, or what are the biggest things to go from like being decent? to take it to the next level. Everybody's decent, bro. It's college basketball. Yeah. Like, you can't get to that 1% or whatever the percentage without being able to hoop. But like, what separates you from like just getting there and being decent to like taking it to the next level and being a 1% of the 1%ers? I would say consistency. That's that's all it really is. I know uh, there's a lot of people that's like motivated, but motivation is only going to take you so far because there's going to be days when you're not motivated at all. Like there's days where I don't want to get out of bed at all. Mm -hmm. But I do just because I know if you consistently put in work, like you're going to get the results you want at the end. It's all about the end game. But it's, sometimes it's hard for people to see like like the long goal. Yeah. So I feel like that's why some people like are like stuck where they at. It's because they like refuse to be consistent. And like, I feel like that's the only way that you could ever get anything you want is consistency. What changed with you mentally? during that process. I know it's easy when you're younger to just hoop and like most of the time we're not like really working on our game when you're younger, it's just like a lot of like just, yeah, just hooping, playing. hooping, That's hooping. It. And then you get older and this shit starts to like feel more like a job in a sense because you have certain shit that you have to do every single day and if you don't, yeah. you're gonna start to fall back and you start to fall back. That's how you, you don't yeah. play, like you get out the rotation. So what changed with you mentally? Just seeing seeing people around me that were, that were making it like really changed my perspective on basketball and like just seeing what they was doing even like just watching like watching youtube like that when they first came out with the home team hoops mm -hmm. like the documentaries and all that shit like that yeah i'm seeing like these five star four star recruits like they working out before high school at 6 a.m and they and they working out after they practice at the end of the night so i'm like if this is how they got there then like this this mu like this must be the way knowing what you know now what would you tell your younger self I would have told my younger stuff to start with just like the consistency and the work. I would have told myself to start earlier. Like I would, I would tell my, I would, I wish I would have started doing the stuff I'm doing now when I was like 12, yeah, 11, because I feel like that, like where I'm at now would be completely different. Like you live and you learn, so hopefully I, I'm blessed enough to have like a son one day, so I could teach him about like everything I know. Yeah, he could start that process early and just do something that I wasn't able to do or didn't have, to have the opportunity to do. Yeah, that's what I'd be thinking when I see, like, I never really had a trainer at all growing up. Like, Cubs was my first, like, real trainer. Yeah. I'd be seeing, like, these little kids or younger kids with Cubs. I'm like, bro, y'all you know, don't want to see nice. how blessed y'all are. I'm like, you're going to be nice. You're nah, you 10, you 11, 12, you 15, 16. Like, imagine having Cubs in high school or middle school, yeah. bro. Like, bro, I just trained myself, like, my whole life. And then yeah. I would just hoop against people that are better or bigger than me. And then, yeah. like, that's how I figured that shit out. But, yeah, that shit. Which, which isn't bad, but, like, just, like, having, like, somebody that's actually going, like, like, focus on the details with you, like, and really, like, do whatever they can to get you better, like, you specifically. Is, yeah. Having access to that is, man. It takes it to another level, for sure. I can imagine certain days you're not going to come in and, go as hard as you would with Cubs. Nah, yeah, he make you though. <laughs> yeah, he make you. And if you don't, you get yeah. the fuck out. Like, he didn't kick people out. Yeah. He made two people cry last week. Yeah. Like, this should get crazy. Um, throughout, like, the whole, like, journey up until this point, like, high school, college, this shit could be runs, anything, a workout. Do you have any, like, favorite moments? Up, up school last year, oh my God. It was, like, the fifth or sixth game of the season, uh, like a random, random Tuesday night. But yeah. for some reason, I was just in my bag. We had a game. Is there a footage of this? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put the footage. <laughs> I was in my bag. Uh, we was playing in uh, Bryan Stratton University. Yeah. And the game popped off. And next thing you know, I got 20 at half. <laughs> Give it to it. I was, I was in my bag. Like, buzzer beater, 
faders, everything, mm -hmm. finishing at the rim, everything. I was in my, that's probably one of my favorite moments because that's when I was, that's when I really like felt like I was dominating like at the college level. It's the first time I felt like the stuff I was doing in high school, like I was dominating in high school, like I was doing that. I was doing that. Yeah, it translated. So I'm yeah. like, yo, this is, this is probably like the best feeling in the world like I ever had. Outside of that, like once you, you get that feeling of like, okay, I'm in college and I have my moment. What do you have to take from that experience to translate it into, like you said, consistency? Because last year, I'm not going to lie, like I had a bad, a pretty terrible year. We had a terrible year at the team, but like I had my moments and I had like my, mo my one moment where I had 28, but like taking that and being more consistent with it, like what is, what is that process like? Uh, well, once you, once you get that feeling, uh, you gotta, you have to work harder. I'm not going to lie yeah. because like some people, some people do that. Some people get that feeling and they, be they become, yeah, they become content. Like, and that's the one thing you can't do. Like once you taste a little bit of success, you got to always feel like, like there's more, Yeah, it's more that I could accomplish. Like regardless of what you do, even if you're at the highest level, mm -hmm. like I know LeBron James has like accomplished like everything in life, but like, I know he's sitting there like, what else, what else can I do? Like, yeah. what else can I do? And I feel like that's like just an approach that everybody should have like at any level. Like when you get a little taste of success, like you gotta be hungry for more. Like that's the only way you going, you gonna surprise yourself. Like, right. You gonna do stuff that you thought wasn't possible. So, is there anything specifically on the skill set side to focus on improving before the next time you get back on the court? I wanna be a more consistent shooter, but I wanna just improve like my overall game. Like I just don't wanna be like I don't wanna just score the ball. Yeah. Like I wanna be able to average like over five, six assists, over five, six rebounds, but over like 14, 15 points at the same time. Right. Cause I feel like, uh, like that's a lot of people's downfall is that- They're one dimensional. They're one, yeah, they're one dimensional. So uh, if all you could do is score the ball, if you're not scoring a ball, if you're not scoring a ball that day, then you're gonna, you're gonna be, you hurting your team at that point. Yeah. Like you're not, you're not reliable. You're like the coach not gonna be able to rely on you if you're not scoring the ball. So just like improving my overall game. What would you tell, because being a guard, like in basketball, I, in my opinion, especially being a point guard is the hardest position like in sports, especially just because you think of like, I always tell people the competition level, like there's a lot of people that are like 6'3 and 100 that are trying to play point guard, right? So yeah. you got to think of all of those people all that are trying to play one position, yeah. one position. So then you got everybody that's like either a non-ball handler or like 6'4, 6'5 and taller competing for for other positions. Mm -hmm. What do you tell people that are trying to make the college level as a guard? What uh, are the most important things that you need, like you have to do non-negotiable that you have to do to be able to play in college? Uh, if you want to be a, a guard in college, you got to be able to shoot the ball at a high clip. You got to be able to handle pressure. And you also have to be able to defend like like 94 feet, depending, depending, on, depending on who you are. But yeah, and you, really it's just about finding your niche. Like if you find one thing that you're really good at, and like you could you could put that in a game, you could like impact games off like that one little niche you find, then you should be fine. Whether that's being a assist guy, or being a guy that's going to get a bucket when when your team needs it the most, or being a guy that's going to take the charge or dive on the floor, like and which could really go for any position. But just I'm a guard, so I I guess I'm speaking to guards. Just really just finding your niche, whether that's knocking down shots or uh, just being an assist guy, or even being like a vocal guy, that that's a, that's really important too, yeah. is what I've learned, because I'm not that good at it. I, well, I've gotten better, but I was not good at it a couple years ago, and I'm still not where I want to be with it. But like, just being a vocal guy, like, if you're the loudest guy on your team, like, uh, just off that skill and all that to the side, you're going to stand out to the coach. Right. Even on this level, because plenty of people on the college level that still don't talk. Yeah, it's actually crazy. Like yeah. you would think, like it's college basketball, ever be talking like no on the high le high high levels. Yeah, but like everything below that, bro. There's so many people who yeah. simple as calling a screen out before it hits you. Like, quiet, no, they quiet. So last question for people that are in the transfer portal right now, or not getting recruited, or just doesn't seem like it's clicking with them, or finding a school. What would you tell them during that that stressful period that you kind of described? Uh. Don't stop working, cause you never know. You never know. Like a school could want you to come and play for them tomorrow, and if you haven't been working, it's gonna show, and you gonna you gonna lose that opportunity that you thought you had. So just be consistent in your work, and just don't lose your confidence. Yeah. Cause that's that's the most important piece too. One of the most important pieces is confidence. 
if you're not confident, even it don't matter how much work you put in, if you're not confident, then you're not going to be able to perform at the level that you want to perform at. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you for coming on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I just had like 40. How can I not? How can I not? I just had like 40 with five people on Grand City. Walked across the bridge. You broke me here today, young money, man.